Welcome back to the course titled Strategic Communication for Sustainable Development. My name is Aradhana Malik and I am helping you with this course. And uh, today in this lecture we will discuss something called as Communication for Behavioral Impact, COMBI, which I will be referring to as COMBI from now on. And uh, this is a strategy, a technique developed, uh, you know, uh, it, it was developed to implement communication strategies to deal with public health crises in developing countries and it has been used extensively by the World Health Organization and the material that I will be referring to in this lecture has been taken from a document by the WHO and this is in the public domain. I will give you the details of this document in the references section along with the slides. So, you can go through the document. It is a brilliantly designed document. It is a very nice document that discusses how specific strategies can be developed to deal with public health crises like outbreaks of uh, communicable diseases, epidemics, pandemics. Uh, endemics in different regions and how do you deal with these these diseases, how do you let the community know, how do you help the community, all of that is uh, part of this uh, technique, the way this technique has been used. But then again in talking about sustainable development, I am, um, you know, I went through this document and I realized that, that this particular strategy can be used very, very effectively for sustainable development efforts also because if all of these tools that have been so meticulously designed are used in efforts in uh, the community as we talked about in a previous lecture, the purpose of uh, any effort in the area of sustainable development, if we want our efforts to be adopted by the community, if we want our efforts to be taken, accepted by the community and made a part of their lives, we want these the community to wholeheartedly accept whatever we are doing. So, the, uh, the best way to go about it is to give them detailed information, to get their input, the feedback loop has to be extremely strong and uh, people need to be able to, uh, you know, they need to accept whatever the community is. Uh, uh, whatever the, the experts or whatever the outsiders are telling them, the community has to accept that some things need to be changed in the community and for that to happen they need more detail, they need as much information as possible and they need the freedom to choose from that information, to choose the, the information that suits them best and that is what this tool tries to do. This tool is very, very community centric, it is very, very participation oriented. So, this is, it is not a tool, it is actually a strategy and um, the goal and philosophy of Combi uh, is to achieve behavioral results, it is to achieve changes in behavior. The strategic, uh, strategic planning and behavioral and social communication begin with the fundamentals and I have taken this statement directly from the document because I feel that it is very, very important to read this statement before we start discussing. Uh, you know, the, the application of COMBI to sustainable development efforts. People cannot act on a suggested behavior if they are not uh, aware of, it should not be aware of, it should not be, it should be aware of and knowledgeable about it. I made a spelling mistake there. So, if they are not aware of and knowledgeable about it, nor can they act if they are not engaged in a full fair review of its benefits and advantages in relation to the cost and effort involved in putting it into practice. So, you know, it is it's important for people to know what is being done, why it is being done, how it will help them, whether they want to accept it or not, whether it fits into their social and cultural fabric or not. And if they do not accept it wholeheartedly, they will not adopt the suggested change in behavior. Principles of Combi, uh, the first principle is to determine the preliminary behavioral uh, sorry, there is another spelling mistake, behavioral outcomes before producing any communication material like posters, pamphlets or radio spots uh, to conduct a rapid situational market analysis to refine the desired behavioral outcomes and to determine how best to engage people with regard to the recommended behaviors to review, refine and change behavioral outcomes to reflect the results of the situational market analysis and then repeat the above till you get it right. 
so find out what do we want out of a situation uh, preliminary behavioral outcomes what is it that we are trying to achieve by sending out this promotional material then we find out what the the market wants what the consumers want what the stakeholders want from our efforts what are their desired behavioral outcomes from their perspective not from the perspective of the people who are going to implement certain uh, certain strategies but from the perspective of the people who are actually going to use them or who are going to be affected by this implementation then based on the feedback we receive from the environment we review refine and change behavioral outcomes and then we repeat the above till we get it right Con situational market analysis deals with consumers needs wants and desires provide an immediate consumer focus why do we conduct a situational market analysis so we find out where the stakeholders are need our efforts most cost uh, does not only refer to the price but also includes the effort and opportunity for adopting the recommended behavior the cost must be examined in relation to the value of the proposed behavior so what is the perceived value some kind of behavioral change how is it going to affect the the stakeholders convenience convenience refers to the accessibility and convenience of a behavior or access to a service so con communication involves applying a mix of interventions far beyond promotion of a product or a brand it is a solution that appeals to an existing want need or desire which offers more value than cost and is conveniently available the critical dimensions of community mobilization especially during crises how do we mobilize communities how do we get them to adopt changes in behaviors it is understanding who is valued and trusted in the community who are currently the most credible sources of information in the community when we talk about community mobilization we are talking about getting the people in the community to do something about the crisis at hand to get up and take action so in order to do that who is going to propel this action we need to find out who the most credible who the most believable who the most trustworthy sources of information are in a community who will give us the most reliable information who will tell us honestly what is going on what the community needs does a credible trustworthy source have particular characteristics which the community recognizes so is it all the old people some specific characteristics is all the is it all the educated people is it all the leaders is it all the house uh, uh, makers or home makers sorry is it all the farmers what kind of people are heard the most you know what are their characteristics how do we identify them so if somebody says okay all the people all the grandparents in the community for example or all the people above the age of 60 they've been in the village the longest and they understand the village the most so these people are the most credible sources fair enough we get them all the ladies all the women in the village great we go and talk to all the women in the village etc to what extent would training or appearance enhance perceptions of credibility and expertise within the community so we need to identify the credible sources of information uh, within the community and we also need to find out what we should do in order for them to accept us what should we do how will they identify us as people who are there to help them so maybe training maybe appearance now i am aware of some public health efforts within india where the young uh, girls in the community were trained in basic reproductive health and hygiene and these girls went around wearing uniforms and um, uh, uniforms in the same sense the same colored suits you know in india we talk about suits as the the salwar kameez and uh, the typical traditional attire so they wore the same colored clothes maybe a school uniform these school kids senior people wearing school uniforms or nurses or they have some identifying physical feature that can be seen and then they go in and they talk to people so you know how would that help the credibility or enhance how people perceive them as whether per people perceive them as believable or as experts or not within the community you go in and you say oh i have this degree and that degree people will not believe you you go in speaking english they'll probably throw you out because they don't they want people somebody who they can relate to but a person who goes and who talks the same language as they talk but 
who is dressed a little differently to differentiate to to help them understand that look i am one of you but i still know a little bit more about this subject than you and i am only here to help you if such people go into the community they will be accepted more mobilize existing social networks and groups we don't go in and impose new things that is not the way to get development done that is not the way to to propel action in the community we take the existing groups and we ask the existing groups to to work on their own we we find out who the community listens to who is already doing the work so we don't bypass them we go in and take their help ensure community feedback during and after the crisis or especially in times of crisis we take the feedback of the community monitoring and evaluation evaluating individual actions and episodes are we doing the right things we ask ourselves some questions are we doing them properly are we making a difference identifying indicators in terms of resources who is handling the resources how many people handling the resources are aware of the behavior change we are heading towards so how do we identify indicators you know so who is handling these resources how many people are uh, who are handling the resources are aware of the behavior change we are heading towards it is the people who are in charge of resources that will eventually uh, you know use those resources Uh, differently how often uh, do the people handling the resources adopt the new behavior these are the indicators how do we measure something we have these indicators in place how much money is spent on introducing the concerned people to the new behavior that is expected so you know all of these things need to be taken into account the nuts and bolts of actually doing development hmm. okay some steps of the combi planning cycle adapted to development situations this series of steps is critical hmm. so the pre planning the program management and administrative uh, response structure this is the the pre planning stage so the step is to manage the program the 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 step here is to to decide how the program is going to be structured how the administration will respond to the program all that structure has to be decided and the first tool here is reflective questions for assessing the organizational context of the crisis situation who is there what are they doing so you know reflection reflective questions the second tool is identifying stakeholders who is going to be affected the third tool here is mapping existing expertise and capacity what do we have in the community that we can use to bring about this change in behavior the fourth one is frequently asked questions about monitoring and evaluation when you ask people to change their behavior they'll say why why should we change any kind of behavior and that is where we need to have a list of responses that we will give in a coherent in a consistent manner so again you know so we decide on these things then the first step here is to identify once we have made all these plans the first step is to identify the preliminary behavioral objectives so we come up with preliminary behavioral objectives we come up with a list and we make you know and then we we decide on the risk factors in the socio cultural context what can affect what we are doing what can propel it what can influence it positively or negatively environmental scanning we find out what the environment needs from us the preliminary behavioral objectives are going to be the outcome so we need to decide on these objectives and the outcomes come out in the form of a document the second step is conducting a rapid situation market analysis the the next tool is tips for interviewing hmm. we find out we make a list we we give uh, the you know we we want to find out what people want from the efforts that are going in so we we come up with a consistent list for interviewing the concerned people we also come up with a checklist this is tool 9 a checklist for conducting a situation market analysis what is it that we want to find out from people what is it that we want to find out how what who is going to be affected who should we talk to etc then tool 11 is the semi structured interviews and so we use all these tools to find out the barriers and facilitating factors for adopting prevention and control measures Wh what kind of measures do we adopt to prevent the situation from occurring again what kind of measures do we adopt 
to remove the barriers that are that are uh, uh, you know coming in the way of our efforts or what kind of factors are propelling our efforts in the area of behavior change so what communication can and cannot do we need to find out whether our efforts are having any impact on or have the potential to have an impact on the community that we want to serve and that kind of checklist about what we as communicators can and cannot do what our efforts communication efforts can and cannot do is critical to planning any kind of uh, communication activity in the community step 3 refining behavioral objective so we've come up with a behavioral objective checklist hmm. we find out uh, the preliminary behavioral objectives in the first step in the third step we revisit the behavioral objectives in light of the situational market analysis state your communication objectives once again and we use a tool called uh, called HIC DARM and this is the tool HIC DARM of behavior adoption first we hear about the behavior then we are informed about it so we let the community know what the behavior is they just hear about it this is what people are doing somewhere in the world then they are informed about it some of them get interested so they direct their attention so then we are informed about it then we are convinced that it is worth our while to do something about it or to change our behavior so hearing information and convincing is the HIC DARM is now we are convinced but I am still listening and I am like yeah maybe I should do it maybe I should stop using plastic bottles so here I first hear yeah there is something called as you know uh, biodegradable material I hear that plastic bottles are going to damage my environment and then how somebody says no they are piling up I see pictures so I am informed about it you know what it may affect me also and then I am convinced and then I listen some more and then I am convinced that it is my worth my while to think about an alternative to using plastic bottles or polythene bags then I decide to act on the new behavior I am so used to using polythene bags I am so used to going to a shop and asking the the shopkeeper for a polythene bag I do not take my cloth bag with me but then based on so much of information that has come my way that is very relevant to me I am convinced that no it is not very nice to use so many polythene bags so then we decide to act on the new behavior maybe I should do my bit to reduce the consumption of polythene bags then I act on the new behavior I take a decision and the next time I go to the market I take my cloth bag I do not ask and when the even if the shopkeeper offers me a polythene bag and asks me if I need a polythene bag I say no thank you I'm, I you know very proudly lift up my bag and show my bag and say I am going to take my vegetables in this bag today or I am going to take my groceries in this bag I do not need a polythene bag so I act on the new behavior then we reinforce the action by feeling satisfied about carrying out the behavior so I lift up the bag and there is somebody next to me who is also carrying a cloth bag who used to get a lot of polythene bags and so I see other people and I feel happy and then I come back or I do not see other people I come back and I read up some more I go back to my convincing I go back to what had convinced me that my behavior should change I go back to the information I received and then I feel good about it I feel comfortable about having stuck to my guns about not or stuck to my stand about not using polythene bags where I do not need to use them so I feel satisfied I feel happy and then I maintain the behavior I become convinced and the behavior is propagated and I do not care if people around me are using polythene bags or not I keep continue with the behavior because I feel that it is not so uncomfortable it is not so inconvenient to carry a cloth bag with me or a jute bag with me and the jute bags become cheaper and I start using them and I like you know so or I carry my own water bottle I put some nice flavor in my water sometimes and I just take it with me and and so you know I do not need to buy plastic bottles from the market so my my behavior is maintained and it is this maintenance that feeds into the sustainable communication that I have 
later with people. So, it, it becomes a sustainable behavior. When we talk about maintained behavior, we are talking about sustainable behavior. Okay. Hmm? So, H I C D A R M. Then that is the, the tool 11. Then we come to tool 12, which is template for channels and settings in which the communication has to take place. So, we decide on a template. We also decide the communication and non-communication issues that are going to be a part of this situation. So, behavioral and communication objectives are then refined based on the feedback we receive from the environment by using these tools. HICDARM, then we, then we decide on a template that we will use, then we decide on the communication and non-communication issues that we will deal with when we implement these strategies. Then the next step is designing an overall strategy, the communication behavioral uh, intervention strategy. So, you know, so we, we conduct a rapid situation market analysis here. Hmm. Okay, sorry. So, we conduct an overall uh, strategy, we restate the behavioral objectives and we restate the communication objectives for behavioral impact and then we come up with a strategy. Mm -hmm. So, we have refined our objectives, we taken, we have taken the feedback from the uh, community and we come upon a strategy and then this strategy, the communication strategy is in the form of a five pointed star of integrated communication action for development efforts. Now, according to the WHO's document, uh, the document proposed by WHO, the first point or the first vortex of the star deals with public advocacy and mobilizing decision makers and administrative structures. So, that is the uh, uh, so that is one aspect of it the second aspect of it is community mobilization the third aspect of it is personal selling mobilizing local networks and advocates to uh, you know so personal selling so we convince local networks and advocates then the fourth vortex is promotional material and advertising the fifth vortex is point of service promotion. So, we let the community know, we tell people, we, we convince everybody concerned and we take these efforts and, and how, you know, which of these vortices uh, uh, gets more a higher priority and which gets a lower priority and how the mix is decided by the situation that we are dealing with. Okay tips for selecting the right combination of tools, which of these tools we will use will depend on uh, the situation. So, we need to choose the most appropriate medium for sending our communication messages. We need to be creative in using existing channels of communication. For example, if drummers are available in a particular community, maybe we could talk to them. If we have you know people who are uh, uh, you know uh, if, if, if there are community events going on we can use those for sending our message strive for engaged communication community participation is key we cannot send out messages and you know hope that people will open their ears and eyes and listen to what we are telling them we get the community involved and we take their advice on how to ensure that the message reaches a larger group of people. We address the issue of risks associated with corrective action. For example, side effects of medicines used to deal with disease outbreaks, etc. So, when we give people medicines, we let them know, you please use this medicine as prescribed by the doctor. If you do not do that, then you could run the risk of these side effects. So, we address these, these risks. We think in terms of advertising on flights. When we talk about communication, we want people to contribute to our efforts. We want the community to be involved. So, if we advertise on flights or uh, you know on on any public transportation, the many times this helps garner funding and other kinds of support from people who may want to help communities but do not know how to. So, we, we use these tools, it is a very, very uh, helpful tool as far as public advocacy as indicated in this uh, star is concerned. So, it helps with that also and mobilizing decision makers and administrative structures. 
steps of the combi planning cycle adapted for the development adapted to development situations. So, uh, the combi planning step, step 5, the fifth step is preparation, uh, prepare implementation and monitoring plans and budget. We have decided on what we want to do, how we want to do it, uh, you know, who will be involved, all of that has been decided. Then we prepare the monitoring plans and budget, the detailed implementation plan is prepared, the monitoring table is prepared, the monitoring implementation plan is prepared and the outcome is detailed implementation plans for the strategy and for monitoring and evaluation are given. So, this is the outcome. The step, the sixth step here is implement and monitor the strategy, identify trends and adapt if necessary and we apply tools 15 to 17, we get feedback and adjustments to the strategy. Okay. And the last step here is evaluate once the crisis is over. So, once the, the crisis, once the situation that requires this intervention is over, we evaluate this. The fourth tool here is frequently asked questions about monitoring and evaluation. We go back to this tool, we prepare a list, semi-structured interviews, we prepare a monitoring table, we prepare a monitoring implementation plan. The outcome here is the impact, lessons learned and good practice. So, the impact that our efforts have are the outcome here and we come up with we and we find out what works and what does not work in a community and that is where we are going to stop now. So, this is how this, this tool can be used in uh, development situations and thank you very much for listening. We will take up the discussion from here the next time we talk. Thank you.